on behalf of 24HourAnswers.com, I welcome you to today's lesson. In this video, we're going to look at how to find relative maxima and minima of a rational function, and this involves us finding critical points, determining the sign of the derivative, whether our function is increasing or decreasing, that depends on the sign of the derivative. And that's actually all been covered in the previous video on finding intervals of increasing and decreasing of a rational function. We did all of this work where we found the derivative, we picked some test values, we determined the sign of f prime, and then we ultimately talked about the intervals on which f of x is increasing, decreasing, we even mentioned some vertical asymptotes on this function. And now what we want to do is we want to take this one step further and we want to determine the relative maxima and minima of this rational function. So it's the exact same work that you see here that we did in the previous video. We go one step further now and we can say if a function changes from increasing to decreasing, granted the function is continuous on this interval here, and the only spot f of x is not continuous is right here at this vertical asymptote, and we did discuss that in the previous video. So since our function f of x goes from increasing to decreasing, we're guaranteed to have a maximum when x is negative 2. So therefore we have a max right here when x is negative 2. We have a discontinuity when x is equal to negative 1.5. If you were to plug negative 1.5 back into your denominator, we would be dividing by 0, which leads to a vertical asymptote in this case. But then we have this interval on the right-hand side of negative 1.5. The function changes from a decreasing function to an increasing function. When a function changes from decreasing to increasing, we have a minimum. And in this case, we have a minimum when x is negative 1. Let's actually find these ordered pairs. We have an ordered pair at negative 2 comma something and negative 1 comma something. To determine that, you can just take these two values and you can plug them back into the function to actually determine the ordered pairs. But what I want to show you here is a approach on the TI-84. We have already determined that we have a maximum when x is negative 2 and we have a minimum when x is negative 1 because on this interval here, we have a function that changes from increasing to decreasing. This is a relative maximum relative to this interval here. Now we also have a relative minimum right here when x is negative 1 because from here our function changes from decreasing to increasing which implies we have a minimum here relative to this interval here. Now obviously this minimum's higher than this maximum which may sound a little bit odd but we got to talk about relative to a certain interval. Checking this function in y equals, I have the function typed in, and that's how we're getting this curve here. If we press second trace and we go to maximum, which is number four, I'm just going to take my cursor and we need to pick a left bound. If I want to find this maximum here, really what I need to do is just take this cursor and I can use the left arrow button if I want to. I'm putting it to the left of this maximum. I'm going to press enter, then I'm going to go to the right somewhere around, I don't want to go there, I want to go maybe right about here. I don't want to go over here into this spot yet. So this is the right side of this maximum. Let's press enter and let's press enter one more time. And notice we have a maximum when x is negative 2. I know it says negative 1.9 repeated, but that is negative 2. And ironically, our y value here is negative 2 as well. And notice we did say we had a max when x is negative 2. Now you could easily take negative 2 and plug it back into here, f of negative 2, ironically it is equal to negative 2. So that's the location of our maximum, at negative 2 comma negative 2. Now ironically we're going to get negative 1, negative 1 for this minimum as well, but the thing is that doesn't always happen. Don't make that assumption, and now let's check that on the TI-84 as well. So let's repeat this process to find our minimum, second trace, go to min number 3, and now we want to pick a left bound. So somewhere over here, but I don't want to go back over here into this spot. This right here is fine for a left bound. It is to the left of that low point on the curve. I'm going to press enter. Somewhere to the right, I'm going to press enter again, and then enter one more time. And now notice our minimum is at negative 1, comma, negative 1. Again, we just go ahead and make the assumption because we know through the calculus that that value, that x value that is, is negative 1 and ironically we get a y value of negative 1. So therefore if we took negative 1 and we plugged it into this function we would get a y value of negative 1 as well. So these are the locations of our max and min 
And there you have it. That's how you find the relative maximum and minimum of a rational function. Of course, to get up to this point, you need to look at how to find the intervals of increasing and decreasing of a rational function, which was discussed in another video, and also how to find the critical values of a rational function. I've chosen to break this up into separate videos. That way you can focus on each piece individually and absorb that topic. In this case here, finding critical values. Then we talked about intervals of increasing and decreasing. And now we're finally talking about the maximums and the minimums. One thing to always remember when a function changes from increasing to decreasing, we have a maximum. Granted, we have continuity on that interval. And then when a function changes from decreasing to increasing, we have a minimum. And again, assuming continuity on that interval as well. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped. Be sure to check out our YouTube channel for more videos. Links to our social media are in the description below.